I'm really excited to talk to Soha El Baklawi today. Soha, tell us a little more about yourself and what you do. Okay, um, I am an Egyptian Canadian. I come from a multicultural background um, and just came to Egypt to live in Egypt for since college. And um, I'm a pharmacist graduate because the family business is in pharmacy. And within um, a couple of, within like for two years of graduation, I had to manage the family business here in Egypt, which was a chain of pharmacies. So pharmacy is one thing and business management is another thing. Uh, the best option for me was to take master's, MBA, master's in business. And to my luck, I took it in affiliation with Cardiff. Uh, university specialized in um, strategic alliances and why they fail. That was one of the top 10 trending topics and it just uh, took my breath away. Uh, after that, alhamdulillah, the family business expanded uh, to diverse industries. Um, the number of employees increased and multiple successions occurred on multiple levels. Keep in mind that I started the master's directly after the revolution, the Egyptian revolution 2011. And so basically, by the time I finished it, which was 2014 to 2015, was the backfire of the revolution and economic turbulences and uh, currency fluctuation, et cetera, et cetera. And yet, alhamdulillah, we're doing profits. One of the core pivoting point, or actually the main pivoting point that uh, made me who I am today was I attended a retreat called Arab Women Leaders in Dubai, and it basically pulled 18 Arab women career achieved, and it tackled three main things that uh, us as career achieved women, we still suffer from societal stereotypes. Alhamdulillah, I did not have it because of the multicultural background. The unconscious bias of ourselves or the lack of belief in ourselves that we cannot have it all. I did not have that too because I come from an overachieving father. What brought me to my knees was the self-critique, also known as imposter syndrome. I was at the age of 27, a star citizen by society. I had everything. And at the end of each day, I used to beat myself up psychologically that I should do more. What is more? I don't know, but just keep powering through and do more. So I collapsed for three hours after the retreat, and then I left the retreat deciding to do something about that. Um, 2017 was the transitional year. 2018 was the launch of Businessita, the go-to platform for women in business. And the idea sparked because I had the choice. Once I realized what I had, I took the decision and I was able to start my healing journey. However, what hit me so hard is what about the women who do not have the freedom of choice to do that? or to even realize or get in the awareness of that. Okay, what lacks women uh, in their freedom of choice? Either that they don't have an identity away from social roles, so she doesn't know who she is if she's not a mom, a daughter, a mother, a sister, caregiver, and or that she does not have financial independence. So she's actually stuck in an environment that is sucking her alive and she's not able to leave because she does not know how to stand alone. So this was the launch of Businessita. Among the launch of Businessita, we've long, we have received multiple awards. We've received uh, in less than two years of inception, uh, one international award and four national awards for our uh, impact on community. And um, the international award was from TIAW uh, along with uh, WCEM. And upon receiving the international award, for women a called World of Difference Award, I received the exceptional opportunity of joining the board for TIAW as the youngest and first from the MENA region. And <laughs> ever since then, we're bringing diversity to the NGO and we're talking to take it away from the US uh, character or citizen. And in 2020, I expanded my hat to uh, wear one more, which is a Startup Grind New Cairo Chapter Director. A Startup Grind is a community-based company focused around entrepreneurship. So basically, I'm all about entrepreneurship and innovation, 
but I have a special spot for women. Not to mention that to my luck, upon uh, launching Businessita, I took doctorate in business, focused on entrepreneurship, and my thesis was women in social entrepreneurship. So that's why I have a special spot for women. Amazing. Soha, you have done so much in such a young age. Tell us a little bit more how your day to day looks these days. How do you divide your time? Okay, so basically, um, coming from an overachieving father who's a workaholic, at such a young age, I knew I did not want to be that example. So at such a young age, I worked on the balance uh, of having my social life in place, my health in place here and there. So my day to day is basically I wake up, I take some me time for about an hour or so. And then after that, I start work for six to seven hours, not more than seven hours. And then after that, I would go work out for one to two hours. And then the rest of the day is mine to take again me time to reflect or to socialize with friends and family, uh, to plan what's the upcoming steps, etc., etc. So this is me in a nutshell. Um, not to mention, of course, a part of me time, a huge part of me time. And one of the blessings from the pandemic is that I became a reader. I've always wanted to be one, but I've never had the chance to sit down. But the pandemic actually was too many screens and my eyes got all over the place and my head was like blowing. So basically I started reading and I discovered one of life's best blessings. I couldn't agree more. Absolutely. I'm a super avid reader. So uh, tell us a little bit, how do you divide your time between all the different roles you have? You run or you're involved in a family company. You've done, you've done, uh, you've launched business Sita. You've got the startup grind. How do you divide your time? Okay, first of all, let me just re-articulate a small part. I left the family business and uh, now I wear just three hats, which is Business Sita, T-I-A-W and Startup Grind. And um, the way is um, the way I work is mostly task based. So, for example, for today, I have like four hours focused on Business Sita. That is the day the task to do it. And then I have two hours focused on um, T-I-A-W. And the thing is, or the crucial point is that upon, I mean, this comes after a lot of work and improvising, but um, you learn that when you get two hours, you actually get the things done within the slot. And in case that you did not or were not able to finish it at this time, you just close it. It will be done tomorrow, day after tomorrow, and you open the other hat to be able to juggle multiple things at the same time. Thank you. That's really interesting. Thank you for telling us that. Um, Soha, what do you think motivates you most? What's your main motivator in wearing all these hats? Um, the purpose, the impact, um, the, the way I feel or the way the feedback that I get upon changing someone's life, especially women. Uh, I mean, I've heard comments like, thank you, you've saved my marriage. It was on the verge of divorce because of one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, the spark they get in their eyes when they have the aha moment of finding their passion or doing something they like. Um, the look, the way they look at you like your savior, just because you, you help them overcome a business challenge here and there. Just, you know, uh, I mean, Basically, there is a saying that I I came across a couple of years back and it just resonated in my ear ever since then. What keeps me going is I want to go to Allah at the end of everything and tell him I gave it all you gave me. I gave the energy, the education, the knowledge. I gave it everything. Thank you for that. I love that. Thank you so much. So how, what top is your top quality, do you think? Um, I believe communication. I'm a social butterfly. Uh, time management. Um, optimistic and positive thinking. Um, out of the box or innovative 
creative methodologies thinking I like what's new I'm a risk taker so let's do it this way yalla let's try it let's try this aha I like the idea here and there amazing so uh, what top tips would you give to maybe young women in your region who are thinking uh, I need to start something new I, they, you know, they have this inner knowledge that they're there for a reason. What would your tips be for, for them? Um, first of all, listen to your gut. First and foremost, especially as women, our gut is loud. So please listen to it. Don't waste your time maneuvering around it because at the end of the day, you'll again get to it but it will take you like 15 years 20 years and we've seen clients who do that so listen to your gut is number one number two seek help um it's not easy uh, to start alone ask mentors ask uh, create a support system around you i mean whatever your role is us as women don't flourish on rocking alone we we flourish by walking in a community or through a tribe so always find support help ask for it um lastly is we're created naturally very agile and flexible keep your eye on the vision and benefit from the flexibility and agility that we have finally is communication communicate whatever you feel how you feel the time you're feeling it don't leave it bottled up excellent advice thank you so much that's a universal advice <laughs> Thank you. So, how? What are your plans, your goals, the dreams for your future? Where is your journey going? Um, I'm not sure where is it going. Actually, I mean, I'm just at a point where I have milestones that I want to accomplish, but I'm flexible enough now, and I've reached a level of maturity that you know what? If it doesn't go this way, I'm not connecting the dots forward. But I believe, I mean, through Business Eater, we've had international clients from the States and from Iraq and from Saudi Arabia. So my, one of the main future goals is to take Business Eater globally, to be um, the go-to platform for women in business globally, uh, to create just this type of support and business knowledge that if any woman got stuck anywhere, she'll find someone there to help her front and center. Um, this is regarding business Cita. regarding um myself i believe that or um, um one other thing regarding business Cita, i i dream of business Cita becoming the mccancy of women economic empowerment to policy maker makers and um macro level uh, uh personnel and organizations so basically because at some point, people say women are already uh, empowered enough. Yes, they have. But what you're offering on the table is not what actually will help us. Like, we are not looking for equal pay as much as we're looking for flexibility, understanding, a nursery in every uh, company here and there. So, exactly, exactly. So, that what is what I have for business. Hita, for myself, again, I'm just going with the flow. Um... I believe entrepreneurship is the savior of what's happening. So um, I'd recommend that um, maybe along the way, I'd do something around entrepreneurship alone, social entrepreneurship alone. And I guess that's it. Sounds amazing, Soha. And thank you for all your service that is much needed and for your vision. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be a part of Shika.